What's up, everybody? Supreme Decisions here. And today I want to go over contracts and why I don't use them and what is needed in a contract for it to be valid. Now, I actually I did this video literally five or six years ago, literally. However, today I had a conversation with a young man and it was funny to me because, you know, he's speaking to me. He was like, well, you don't do contracts. I understand. That's why you think that way. Because I told him I don't do them because one, I'm not going to enforce it. And then two, if I need a contract for 300 bucks, then whatever. Because to me, if you're going into business or you're talking about a business, one of the biggest things that most people do is understand that there must be something involved with it for gain. Now, the biggest thing is why I don't work on contingency. And give you a quick explanation of that. When you are have an attorney, well, actually, no, I'll save that for later. But the contract itself, what makes a contract valid? The first thing most people understand is there must be an offer. That is step one of any contract. Now, the offer looks like, hey, let's do business together. All right, whatever that business is. Now, both parties must accept, well, the person who um, received the offer must then accept the actual offer in order for the contract to even begin. The next part would be the agreement. And that would be your terms and what will be done within that contract between the two parties. Now, here's the thing that most people forget or think I don't know in order to make a contract valid. That is consideration. And the topic that was brought up was, oh, in business, contracts are done. Absolutely. I have several businesses that I'm working with daily, and all of them are done with contracts. We have distributors that are under contract. We have other workers that are under contract. I understand the contracts. I also understand the implementations of it. But the biggest part of it is consideration. There's no contract without consideration. Understand that. Now, consideration comes in many forms. Generally, it's going to be collateral. So when we're thinking about these court cases and why no one's taking your case pro bono, i.e. me, because when someone takes a case pro bono or they take a case on contingency, they are saying that case is mine. Hence why the attorney gets the check first, because they are the ones who are staking the claim. They are just taking it on behalf of you. I don't do that. It is your case. It will always be your case. So any contingency, the check goes to you. Now, if I now have to fight you for time and consideration, that becomes a headache. And then, in essence, because 99% of people will not do what is right, literally, we're going to say, I've worked for free. Now, the odds of me doing a case on contingency and getting paid, I would have to do it at least 100 times to get paid once. That's not a great bet for me. I don't do 99s to 1. So understand, when you don't have consideration at the beginning of a case or a contingency plan, there is no means of enforcement because the contract was not valid because I'm not taking your case. I'm assisting you with it. So always understand that in order for a contract to be valid, there must be an offer. There must be acceptance. There must be an agreement. And lastly, the most important piece is consideration slash collateral. So always understand that because you cannot enforce it without the consideration or collateral. Because you got to give up something to get something. And this is Supreme, and I'm out.